Hi guys, welcome to Threads Podcast, Life Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been about a month since Ben and I sat down and chatted, and uh, we just the, two of us. just the two of us. Yeah, you better get. Do you remember how to do that? It's been a while. Yeah, you're a little quiet. Um, how's your headphones? I just realized. You I can hear. You hear okay? Oh yeah. All right, good. So yeah, it's been about two two months or about a month since we sat together and uh, recorded. So. We're just going to kind of do our normal format, and uh, yeah. I think we need to have a different word than normal format. Yeah. Typical, standard, I don't know. Yeah, we need something that doesn't sound so boring. Yeah. So typical and normal. standard. Um, I don't know. That's We should have talked about that in our meeting. Right. We just had a meeting and talked about all kinds of things. Yeah, we did. But uh, if you're new to the show or just need a reminder... Threads podcast is an opportunity for Jason and I and our guests, and when we're guests of other podcasts too, apparently, to talk unfiltered about life and uh, what's happening in our lives and um, things that we're learning, things that we're failing at and need to get better at. It's just a place to have unfiltered conversation. Where else can you sit down and talk with somebody for an hour plus about life with no distractions that's what we're here trying to do and by doing this our hope is that our listeners are encouraged to do the same with connections in their lives and have similar conversations and be open and transparent and you know it always makes our day when we hear from our fans that that's happening and um, it's just been really cool to see so thank you for joining us on this adventure And um, we're going to jump right into a personal update. So I'll let you go first because I realized what I did with YouTube and I'm going to try to work on that while while you do that. All right. See, here I thought you were like nodding at me because you were jiving (laughs) with what I was saying. And no, you're just jiving with what's on YouTube. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. I got it. I'm listening. (laughs) You're good. You really didn't even need to do that intro because... Or that explanation, because I put myself first. Oh, I wasn't looking at it, so that's uh, <laughs> that's why I said that. So No worries. Um, well, a personal update for me, there really is... Well, I guess there is. I There's a lot. What are you talking about? I, I figured you, I, we'd... Uh, I didn't tell I'll, the story before. No, but I so. figured we'd put about, I don't know, 30 minutes on your personal update, <laughs> and then three seconds for mine. Right. So on Halloween... I slipped and fell on a customer's staircase. It was an outside staircase. It was wooden steps. They were, they appeared to be very old and they weren't treated with anything. So the water just kind of soaked right into that wood and it became very slick. And it was raining and sleeting and a little bit of snow on Halloween. Um, I was wearing brand new Doc Martin boots, which I thought had great tread on them. I don't know if that's the case or what, but um, I was leaving the customer's facility after my appointment, and I slipped going down those stairs. Hard. I fell hard. Like, it wasn't just a slip and grab the handrail and pretend it didn't happen. This was an all-out slip feet go in the air legs are in the air land on my lower back with my butt hitting the cement and my back hitting the stair now question did you at look around to see if there were any um cameras around that recorded that (laughs) i wasn't in the state of mind in that moment but as i was driving home um because i just went home after that yeah (laughs) i didn't do anything else uh i did think about that because that a, it would be really funny to watch. Yeah. B, now, well, would it would it be funny now? Now we're mm, getting we're there. getting there. Still on the fence. Yeah. And B, it would be good if Workman's Comp or anybody else came back and said, "We need evidence." <laughs> oh. Now I don't think that'll ever happen. But, no. You know. So that happened, and I fell hard, and I'm a big guy, and that's one thing that the doctor. <laughs> said he's like you're carrying around a significant amount of weight rude well he was a big guy himself too so he prefaced it with you and i are big guys like when you fall that's a lot of mass hitting in a sudden moment of inertia or whatever you call it the physics behind it 
So yeah, it was it was bad. So I went home. I called my boss and I said, I fell on stairs and I'm in a lot of pain, so I'm just going to go home. And um, thanks for stealing my phone, buddy. You don't need it. I'm hearing <laughs> interference. It's driving me nuts. Oh. See, you could have said nothing and I could, no one would have known. Well, except for our live viewers. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All three of them. So doctor or boss sent you home. Yep. Boss sent me home. So, well, actually, I told my boss I was going home. I was like, it just really hurts. I need to go lay down. So I did. But then, um, that was Thursday, and then I went home and handed out uh, candy to the (laughs) trick-or-treaters. I did so many things with a broken back. Um, So I went to urgent care the next day in the morning, and... um, just to rule out if there was anything broken or anything like that. So, well, originally you weren't going to go, but then your boss said you should probably go get checked out. My boss said that, and then the owner of the company said that. And so, after my Friday morning meeting with my boss, I went and got checked out. And I was told incorrectly that everything was fine, it's just muscle strain. So, that doctor, who was a med student, that was completing the urgent care section of his residency. Um, He just said, it's, it's muscle strain, go about your normal activity and do some stretches and you should be in good shape in about a week. So I was like, all right, doctor's orders. So that's what I did. Um, You you don't forget the best part that he didn't even look at your back. Yeah. Yeah, there's that. I mean, what? That's so bizarre. Did you yeah. follow up with them at all, or are you just gonna let it go? Or I don't. I'm I'm trying to recover first. Yeah, I mean, and it, then make decisions about that. Well, I mean, you. Sh- I I think at the least you should at least reach out and say, "Man, this was such a big." You mi- missed the boat here. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like he should have ordered an X-ray. He should have been a little bit more like, mm, "This might be worse than what it is," because. So that was what two or three days after you. It was the next day after. Okay. I well, I bet you. Myself. I bet you had a a big old bruise there. It was starting by, by that point. Oh yeah, because that night Andy noticed the bruise and she was like, "That doesn't look good." <laughs> I was like, "Well, he said it's just muscle strain." And, and I don't <laughs> blame you. I would have been like, "Okay." I mean, you're you're the one that's going to school to be a doctor. Yeah. I assume that you're correct. I didn't know he was a med student. When I saw him. Now, maybe it said that on his badge that he wore, It should. I didn't know. But he was a resident, right? Yes. So that it's technically not a student. They've okay. already gotten through their school. They're That's just, true. So, because I'm, if it was a student, I don't think they would let him sign off on that without someone else around. Yeah, yeah. But. So, that happened. And I guess there were some clerical errors that were made as well. So, I'll get to that in a minute. But, so I... Uh, handed out candy to trick or treaters. I went and did a podcast episode with Eric Zane at his house. Oh, I'm that's right. Trying, I drove for a ride share two nights in a row late. <laughs> like, there are so many things that I did because it's what I normally do. And he said, just conti- continue with life as you would normally with no restrictions. So I, I did. But then my back was not getting any better. In fact, the pain was getting worse each day. I got to Wednesday, and I was in rough shape. Like, I had three appointments that I had to run that day. So that's six times of either getting into or out of the car, which is the worst pain. Like, that is – it's it's getting better now because I've kind of learned how to enter and exit the car slowly, but it really hurt. And so after three appointments – Tyler was my boss was with me on the last appointment and I just looked at him and was like, I am hurting. He's like, I can tell. So I said, I'm going to go back to urgent care. Something's not right. So that's what I did. Um, it was about four 30 and then I just went to urgent care and, um, that doctor, he came into the room. I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember the flow of events. I essentially broke down and started crying because I was in such pain and I had been told to just go on with regular activity. And so I was frustrated that that was what I was told to do. Yeah. So I was just a mess. I was in pain. I was stressed. I was just 
honestly furious that I was back here with all this pain after doing what the doctor told me to do. And I had to wait that time to be seen. I think I was sitting in the waiting room for about 40 minutes. It's just like, this is awful. So um, the doctor comes in and just takes one look at me and he's like, you're in rough shape. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and then he's like, let's take a look at your back. So he lifts up my shirt. And he's just like, whoa, that's yeah. pretty bad. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it, it hurts. He's like, I'm sure it does. And then he puts um, his other hand. So he's got one hand on my back and then he puts his other hand on my belly and kind of pushes. He's like, does that hurt? And I'm like, yes. He's like, okay, you need to go to the emergency room. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? He goes, if that's hurting, there's potential of damage to your kidney. And then that's when he went into a spiel about, you know, you're, you and I are bigger guys. We carry weight. And when that weight hits the pavement with such impact, things get broken and tossed around inside. Yeah. And he's like, so you absolutely need to go to the emergency room and have a, a CT scan. I was like, seriously? So he's like, would you like me to call an ambulance for you? And I was like, I don't think that's necessary. And he goes, well, you're in rough shape. If you need it, just let me know. And I'd be happy to arrange that for you. And I was like, no. I, I'm surprised that they just didn't do it because I, well, I always think about liability. Yeah. Like if he thinks that you need it and you they send you and all of a sudden you're driving and you, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Have a grabber or something. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so... That happened, and um, and so this doctor, he's the one who told me about the previous doctor. He was like, let me go check your chart. Something's not adding up here. If this is a workman's comp claim, we should have been following up with you during this week. You didn't hear from us? I was like, no. I haven't heard a thing since I was seen a week ago. He's like, that's not right. Let me check the chart. So he goes out, comes back in. He's like... I don't know what to tell you other than it was a med student and there's administrative processes they're supposed to follow with workman's comp. You were supposed to hear from our department that handles workman's comp. And I'm like, yeah, none of that happened. <laughs> and so he's like, I am so sorry. And super, he had the best bedside manner. That's great. Complete opposite of the first doctor that I saw. Yeah. So, it just felt so good to be validated. Like he took me seriously. I felt like I could just let all of that pressure and all the anxiety I was feeling. I feel like it just kind of left because he took me seriously and we had a game plan. So even though I turned down the ambulance, he still called Blodgett and said, I'm sending a patient here. Please be ready for him. And sure enough, I got there and... They took me into a room, set me up with an IV, scheduled me for the T CT scan, put pain meds through the IV. It was like a whirlwind. It's like, oh, I guess this is happening. So, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it sounds like the ball got dropped quite a bit, and it's it's unfortunate, especially with Megan being in the, you know, I hear some, some of the stories. I'm just like, man. I I understand the mistakes happen. They're going to happen. Yeah. But um, my guess is that you're, there probably wasn't any more damage done by what you not, you know what I mean? There wasn't. But it's good that you finally, I'm glad you got had so much pain. That sounds weird. <laughs> that you were like, okay, I need to get this rechecked yeah. out because, oof, man. Well, so, if I were to just continue with regular activity, it would have slowed down my recovery time. Yes, so, that's true. But make it worse? Probably not. Yeah. So the injury that I have is a fracture of the transverse process, which is like the wings on your vertebrae. Okay. And those wings are also tied into all of your muscles in the back. So imagine... Your spine, my spine is basically playing tug of war with this little piece of bone that's being pulled by all the muscle. Mm -hmm. And the reason I have to just do nothing is because that bone has to regrow and reattach to the vertebrae. Mm. And that's the only cure for it. Mm. Now, if that piece of vertebrae had somehow moved or slipped and was causing pain, 
then they could do surgery and remove it. But if it's not causing, you know, if it's staying in place. Right. It's causing pain. Yeah. No, no <laughs> doubt. But if it's staying in place and it's not moving, which the MRI showed it wasn't moving, then your best course of action is just rest, wait, rest, do nothing. Don't bend, don't twist, don't lift more than 10 pounds. Those are my restrictions. So in my world, that means I can't do my normal job because it requires bending and twisting and lifting. and What? P- your briefcase? Well, getting in and out of the car. <laughs> True. Like for appointments or prospecting no, stops, I, I can't twist. I know. I'm so, just teasing. You yeah. just don't have a manual labor job unless you're like delivering a printer or something. That Which you, I do Well, No, I know. I you, At least I feel like once a week you're like, I'm running to this place because they forgot this printer or something. Like Small that. company. It yeah, happens. it happens. So, so you're off for at least two weeks. Yep. So my follow-up appointment is December 13. I cannot return to full-time work until after that appointment. However, if I choose to, I can go back um, and do part-time. But I have to call into my doctor and get that approved first. Yeah, so. Megan asked, uh, fan Megan asked if, uh, I guess my wife's a fan too, but not my <laughs> wife, asked, how are your kidneys? They didn't have any... No kidney damage. Okay. Thankfully. You're peeing okay? You're not peeing yep. tar? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was one of the things that they were looking at too in the CT scan was kidneys and spleen and everything else down there. So Yeah, so on, on a back behind the scenes look, Ben's been really... Which surprises me has been really uh, fidgety and hating being down. And I, I, I don't know. I just see you like, oh, this is not that this is great that you're hurt, but be like, oh, I'm going to catch up on Netflix and I'm going to just going to, you know, lay on the couch. And but I think I don't do that well. No, and I, I thought you did, and so this has kind of been an eye opening thing for you to be like, yeah, this is. I don't know. It yeah. feels like you have ADD. <laughs> Kind of. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do enjoy just checking out every now and then and, you know, being an introvert, hiding away. But in that, I still like the freedom of being able to get up and go somewhere if I wanted to. When I was on the opioid pain medicine, I couldn't drive, obviously, and I wasn't in any physical shape to really get out and do much. So I was homebound for a week without leaving the house. Like... (laughs) <laughs> or almost a week. I think I might have gone out once during yeah. that period, but I didn't drive for a whole week, which is insane. Y'all, I tried to convince Ben to take pain meds and record tonight, but he decided <laughs> it wouldn't be a good idea. I said, I'll drink. We can kind of just see what happens. Yeah. No format. Kind of fun. But, uh, well, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, recording. This weekend has been the most active I've been in a while. And it's funny because it's really not that active. But, well, from what you've been yeah. doing. Like this morning, we got up and went to church. And, um, our thing at our church members, um, we try to park as far back in the parking lot as we can just yep. to leave room for the visitors. So uh, that's just what I do. But then I got out of my car and looked and saw how far away the entry was. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> so then I had to walk from one end of the building to the other, which, again, when you're in good sh- good health and there's no issues, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But when you have a really bad back, it's like, I'm going to feel this when I get there. Yeah, I bet you've been looking back and be like, man just a different perspective of seeing people that struggle and you're like, oh man, I, I've been there for at least a small portion of my life. Yeah. But, um, I'm glad that when it heals, I'll be, you know, better. Yeah. It definitely gives me more empathy for people that have physical disabilities or limitations. Yeah. So, um, okay. So that's my long winded person. Yeah. Mine is not that long. (laughs) Um, so, as you know, I I do lawn fertilization. I've been laid off for uh, about a couple of weeks, maybe, and this is the first time in about four years that that's happened. And uh, so it's been really hard for me to transition into um, like a schedule where you know every day I get up and do this, 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 and you know when you work a you know, nine to five or seven to three or whatever, five days a week, it's pretty easy. You get up at this time, you do this, you come home, then your night is free. 
But even with rideshare uh, or gig economy kind of things, earning income, it's kind of up in the air. Like sometimes you have a flex shift and that just pops up randomly in the afternoon and you're like, okay, I got to do this. Or you don't make enough money during the day, so you have to go out at night. So it's been really hard um, just sleeping weird patterns. Um, kind of like Gabe does, not as bad as Gabe, but you know, just not being able to have a normal sleep s- schedule yeah, and pattern. That and, would be so hard. And working overnights on the weekends, and it's just that's been really tough. Uh, I mean, it's fine. I, I'm, you know, I'll be okay. But uh, I like consistency, and I don't like a ton of change, so that's been hard for me. Hmm. But um, other than that, family's doing good. I haven't broke my back. Um, I haven't slipped on any stairs. I've slipped on <laughs> ice, but not fallen. Yeah. Thank goodness I recovered. Um, but yeah, that's other than that. I, I feel like it's been, gosh, it's been a month since you and I have sat down. Yeah. I mean, you and Meg had some time away. That was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Is that in the, that wasn't there. Oh, it's reminding you. Okay. So the funny part is, is I thought the personal update was, um, separate from what we've learned, experienced and moving last week. Oh, wait. Oh no, no, it's not separate. It's, I mean, okay. Well, <laughs> I'm confused because you you wrote I've been home for a week, but bored out of my mind finding random things to do. I mean, that's you, my you, personal update. You didn't talk about any random things that you do. Oh, well, so I guess I, I could go back to that. But. Okay, <laughs> clerical. No, apparently we have to separate that. Oh, and Megan and I had a beautiful anniversary weekend. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> that's what I've experienced. By yeah, we uh um booked a hotel downtown. And how was it? Because I've heard mixed reviews. I know I have two, but we look. We went to TripAdvisor, and not that that's the end all be all, but I it's think more unbiased. I think it is too, and it was really highly rated. So I think since the new people took over yes. and kind of gutted it, and I had seen the stuff like in the hotel, I could stuff like mm, that probably sh- didn't get redone. But so, a lot of the rooms were pretty much like really nice. Hmm. So no, it was it was a great hotel. Awesome. So I didn't have any trouble, but yeah, we went to, um, we tried all restaurants that I've never eaten at that we haven't. So okay. we did, I'll just rattle them off. Uh, we did Hancock, which is Nashville hot chicken. Really good. We did butcher's union. I had bacon wrap meatloaf. <sighs> bacon wrap meatloaf. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Um, we did the Winchester, which I was like, eh, it was all right. I thought their burger was so great and I had it and it was just like, meh. And then what else did we do? We had one more thought there was one more maybe that was it hmm. so it was a great time we had good time connecting and it was just it was just awesome hmm. that's great like we didn't even argue or get fussy with each other wow <laughs> like all weekend even with trying new restaurants um no wow. i i've been trying to go in a better attitude of Impressive. i've had at times where I, she wants to go there and then like the last minute i'm like no nah, i don't want to do that So, um, but no, it was good. It was very restful. Oh, oh, that's what it was. We went, we went to Hancock for lunch. Then we went to the cheesecake factory and ordered takeout cheesecake. Like the weekend it opened, that was a disaster, by the way. (laughs) And then went home, went back to the hotel, ate it, and took a nap. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) That's perfect. So, um, I guess to build on mine, what I've experienced or been moved by. Um, I've seen a lot of things on Netflix. One video that I'm, or one documentary I'm watching is, I think it's just called Hacked. It's all about the, um, Cambridge Analytica. What, say what now? Cambridge Analytica. They, oh, Cambridge. Cambridge. Yeah, yeah, Cambridge. That's why I didn't, it's Cambridge. Pretty, whatever. Can you say bagel for us? Shh. Bagel. <laughs> but they um they're the ones that ran social media for different campaigns. They actually ran it for uh, Obama before really? they did Trump's, hmm. which is really interesting. So it's just a whole documentary about how they were able to essentially hack, I mean not really hack, but they manipulate manipulated people specifically by targeting certain demographics on Facebook and they came up with these profiles to profile Facebook users and build ads that essentially riled them up and got them to vote for whoever Which party? they were being paid to promote. Yeah. So 
that started with the Obama campaign, and they were so successful with that, so that when it came time for Trump, the same people were behind that whole thing as well. And then um, Brexit, they were involved in that as well. So it's this whole documentary about how they did it and people's response to that and just basically diving into the ethics of is it okay to exploit data like that to sway an election so what was the result of that because basically facebook gave them that data or or there was definitely some transactional stuff facebook gave them direct access to some of that I and hate then that. mark zuckerberg in court when they took him to the stand whatever it was yeah i remember congressman he totally downplayed Facebook's involvement in it. So Facebook is definitely far more involved than what they are owning up to. Yeah, I wonder if they they would, like, as far as the stats, if they would force Facebook to show the stats of that. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I didn't follow it much. I just know that it sucks that um, they took our data. I always ask people this. When, when those social media things come up, would you pay for Facebook? So if you yeah. could, if you would would you pay five dollars a month knowing that your data was secure? Absolutely. I would Hands for down. five bucks, and everyone's like, "Oh no, I don't need Facebook." You're full of shit. I'm telling you, <laughs> you would you would want to be on there. I did about three weeks of the app not being on my phone, and then I fell and got hurt. <laughs> and then you're like, <laughs> "I'm like, I need a distraction now." <laughs> yeah, interesting. But yeah, it is such an interesting thing, and now a lot of candidates that are running for president are using your personal data as like one of their campaign points of how they're going to do things differently. Like I know Yang, I don't even know much about the guy, but that's one of his main points as he is running for presidency is he's going to protect all of our data. And it's just crazy how the world has changed. So, yeah, I, somebody, one of the council members that was running for office Somehow got my email, which I guess isn't too hard to find, but emailed me to vote for him. I was like, "Interesting." I know I did not give that to you, but right. I guess it's not too hard to find. But I don't know if he won or not. I don't know if it, which I was like, "What the hell?" and just deleted it. <laughs> awesome. So, so what about a flub? Yeah, we also like to you know share the highlights, but also the low lights, things that. Yeah, not proud of. Yeah, just so that you know, threads is about like Ben talked about being unfiltered and just kind of saying we screw up all the time too, and we're not gonna you know not talk about that stuff. Exactly. This isn't the social media where you only post the highlight reel of your life. Right. This is uh, the unfiltered version. I'm calling this a near flub because it could have really turned into something ugly had my good friend Jason not said something to me. So. The other day, I had a conversation with my wife and was like, you know, if I'm feeling better, one of the things that um, isn't comfortable for me is to sit in my driver's seat in the car. It has lumbar support and it's adjustable. So it's one of the few places that and my recliner in my office, those are the two places that I feel feel the most comfortable sitting in. So I was like, you know what? I can go sign on and drive for Uber and Lyft during the day if i'm feeling up to it be a good way to make some money while i'm down and won't be so bored yeah something to do so i got on telegram the messaging app that all of our rideshare buddies use and mentioned that to jason and a couple others and uh jason's like i don't know about that i think you should think about that you're on workman's comp that could be insurance fraud and I was like, oh, shit, you're probably right. So I Googled it, and you were right. The only caveat is I can work, but any work that I do, would the pay would be deducted from what I get from workman's comp. So right. which is it makes 80, no sense. It's, which is 80%, right? Yeah. So, And there's no way I'm going to make 80% of what my salary was. No. So it's like I could either stay at home and continue to earn that, not earn, continue to get that money. Oh, you earned it. Comp. That's true. <laughs> or I can sign on and rideshare drive and get the same amount. Like, it just didn't make sense. So yeah. I was like, fine. 
So there goes that great idea. But I think you definitely saved me from some short. I just didn't think things through all the way. No, and again, you're in pain. You're on pain meds. You know, a lot of things that came across from you the last week I took with a grain of salt. <laughs> not that I did I'm sure. Not that I was ignoring it, but just be like, mm. yeah. You know, over the last weekend when you were editing a podcast, and I was like, what the hell is going you on? You don't edit podcasts. What are you doing? Well, yeah, I won't get into that, but we got in a little discussion. I'm like, this is the most bizarre thing out of you, Ben. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I've not been in my finest. But that's okay. I mean, that, there's a reason for that. You're on the high pain meds, and that's Well, sucks. today is the first day that I've been off meds. Like, completely? Mm-hmm. Other well, I mean, Tylenol. I do Tylenol. That's the only thing I can do. Like, the doctor gave me clear instructions. She's like, I'm writing this prescription so that it ends on Saturday. You need to go a couple days without the pain meds without the anti-inflammatory she's like your system is going to need a break if yeah. you continue on this you're risking ulcers and all this other stuff and i was like okay i'm not gonna mess around with that so yeah i got, got my heating pad plugged in and feeling all toasty over there that's all the pain relief i have today oh and in the presence of me of or is course. that more pain <laughs> i got some pain meds upstairs you can have oh ah. oh yeah <laughs> Not I don't t- know. nothing great. Yeah. So my flub uh, is terrible. I read it and was like, "What?" Yeah, freaking. <laughs> this is what I wrote: freaking out about snow pants. So, um, on a couple, usually a couple days a week, I get the kids off to school, and uh, Megan goes in early. Avery gets up, lays on the couch. What do you want for breakfast? <laughs> it's usually cereal, and she usually likes honey nut cereal. I'll try to make not this super long. <laughs> Honey nut cereal. So then she, uh, I said, what do you want? She goes, peanut butter checks. I said, oh, I ate those. So it's a small box. I ate it in one day, okay? I had two big bowls in the morning. This was on the podcast, the last episode. It was? It was. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Oh, yeah. Megan rode you hard about the checks. Yeah, she rode me hard. Yeah, but this is how it starts out. You mean the one we just recorded? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we talked about that? You talked about the checks and how you ate like two bowls of it or something. Yeah, but that's it, right? And then she was like, serving size, honey. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, that's part of it. So she said, peanut butter checks. I said, sorry, babe. I ate them. And she's <laughs> like, those were mine. Ah. You like gave me attitude. I'm like, excuse me? I've always had the attitude with my kids. And maybe that's not right. I'd be like, I'm sorry. I can eat anything in this house. Okay. <laughs> I work. You live here. I mean, I, of course, I'm. they can eat too. But what I didn't f- know is that Megan had specifically bought those for her, but I've eaten them before and no one told me. Right. So I'm like, whatever. Clueless what? dad. Yeah. So I just ate them in one day. Two, gi- four giant bowls. The box was gone. <laughs> I didn't eat myself sick, but so that kind of <laughs> set me off. And so we're getting ready to leave, and the whole snow thing took us for a loop, oh, and yeah. just finding gloves and snow pants and all this other stuff. And of course, that was a day that Megan wasn't here, right? right. So perfect. Everything was set out. There were snow pants oh. over Sully's chair stuff. Avery had other stuff, and Avery's like, "I don't have snow pants." I said, "Well, Mom told me you told her that you didn't need snow pants, so I don't know what to tell you." In the meantime, she had grabbed Sully. Now I'm already like. For some reason, I was already, I always say like my anxiety is at, or my, uh, not anxiety, but like my temperament or whatever. I feel like it's always like at a 60 or 70. I'm kind of right. Always just intense. I'm intense. So I'm already, then I'm bumped up to the 90 after the cereal thing. So I'm already hot. (laughs) So in the meantime, she tries the snow pants on that Sully has been wearing. Oh, yes. She gets them on. She gets them stuck. So she, no. then the zipper won't come down. Now, mind you, we're two minutes from going outside. The bus is coming. So I'm like building and I'm, and, and, uh, so I start yelling and I, I, in, in one side of my mouth, I'm like, you did this, you did this. And the other side, I'm like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. But I kept saying you, 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 which I had to work on in therapy. But like, if it's not my fault, why do you keep saying you? Yeah. So we're going back and forth and this is all happening. And finally, I just said, F it, and I grabbed the snow pants, and I just went, and ripped them. 
to get him off. She couldn't get him off. We had to get on the bus. So I freaked out and just ripped him. Oh, man. So now Sully doesn't have snow pants. Avery, Avery doesn't, doesn't have snow pants. <laughs> Thankfully, I found a pair to put for Sully. Avery's not as critical. She doesn't roll around in the snow. <laughs> but that was terrible. And, of course, I had therapy an hour later. Oh, of course. So you Perfect. know what we talked about. Oh, but yeah. Man, I tell you what, I don't have those uh, those those times very often. I used to have them a lot, but I mean, man, it, I felt so bad. And then the one thing, and and I'm going to be unfiltered, and this is going to be vulnerable. The one thing that she said to me, and it really, it really stuck with me. She goes, "Dad, I'm afraid of you right now." Mm. So I was really like you in my, gone. I was gone, and I was like, "Okay, okay," and that was after. I ripped the pants. Like yeah. I was still kind of going after that. And then it kind of made me reset. And that's the one thing I am working on in therapy is how can I, before I get to that level, have a brief three seconds of, whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. And kind of back up a little bit. Um, so I don't have those freak outs. So what you're reading intensely over there. Our fan got back to us. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking for something else in our email, but then I saw that. Oh, okay. I was trying to find the YouTube link because I was wondering where Megan commented. Oh, and Facebook? A, really? I didn't see it. Not my Megan. No, no, no. Megan Deneff. Yeah. I didn't see the comment on oh, the video. Oh, okay. But anyways. Sorry, I was just trying to catch up on social. Yeah. If you, if you, Yeah. But yeah, basically that's what it was. It was a terrible moment. And uh yeah, it really stuck with me when she said, I'm afraid of you. Because yeah. honestly, like when I was growing up, my mom would do that stuff to me. And I never said that to her. I wonder if I did, if she would have stopped. Hmm. Not that I was like hurting Avery or anything. Like I did, I've, I've never done that, obviously. But I was just like, man, that really hit me in the heart. So no kidding. Wow. Yeah. I, I've had moments like that too with my daughter thankfully every time andy was close by but i was just getting to the point of like 110 percent frustration like i am so mad right now yeah and andy would just be like you need to leave the room right now you're scaring me yeah like, okay <laughs> i've never seen out. you like that i've never seen you it takes a lot yeah i, I can imagine and miracle at times is a lot so yeah, I hope I never make you that mad because if anybody that's listening that has never watched us live or seen photos of Ben, he's a bear. <laughs> he's a bear. He has hands that you'd be dead in like two seconds. <laughs> Thankfully, he's peaceful. For the most part. For I the mean, most part. I have my moments. I mean, I do have a wrestling heavy bag in my or a boxing bag in yeah. my garage. Yeah, well, that's for, for Stefan, though, yeah, right? I don't use it. But <laughs> it was actually, it came with the house, which is kind of cool. Interesting. The previous owner asked if we wanted it, and I was like, yeah, I've got two kids that could probably use that one. Yeah. They're upset. Yeah. So. Cool. Um, <laughs> remember, we, remember we talked about transitions? Yeah. And it says, Jason, outro, transition to therapy update. Where? Up by personal update. Intro, outro segment. Well, then why – so why do we have an outro and then an intro for Mew? So we have an outro from Personal Update. And I don't know. It, it should be – like, there should be no outro. I it, must have been on pain meds when I wrote all this All right, I'm something. deleting that. <laughs> I guess we're confusing ourselves. This is what happens when we don't sit down for a month. Yeah, it really does. We try to transition into other things, but it's just – it's difficult. We so. got it. It's all right. Life unfiltered. Yeah. We're, we're, we're cleaning it up. I'll edit it out. Don't worry. Oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> no. So um, part of the threads, um, culture, DNA, whatever you want to call it, is mental health and being open and transparent about that aspect of our lives as well. So Jason and I are both very strong believers in seeing therapists. I said it without even stumbling over it. Aren't you proud? I am proud. Yeah. Good I'm job. Making it part of my verbiage. I always used to call them counselors, but they're therapists. So, Depends um, who you see. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so um, we both go to therapy, and we like to just talk about that on our show because so much of our culture in America, like you, it's a taboo thing. 
to talk about mental health. I think it's getting better. I think it is, but I think there are still some people who they're afraid to go to counseling or therapy because it's so unknown. And what are my friends or family going to think? I think it's more the what friends or family over like the unknown. Yeah, true. To to me. There, There is a stigma. I mean, I felt it. And there's definitely a stigma in church. Maybe not as just an attendee at a church, but I've been in situations where, you know, the leadership would just encourage people to, you know, you really just need to take this to the Lord in prayer. It's like, great, I do, yes, but I also need to go get some help because I'm a mess. Right. And I can pray all day and I'm still going to be a mess. Like, there needs to be a mental health component too. So, being in that type of a church environment where it's almost like frowned upon to seek help and you're less spiritual because you go out and seek help from a mental health therapist. Uh, that's kind of the world I came from. So it was definitely a, an issue of um, if I do this, if I go down this road, what are church people going to think of me? Are they going to think my faith is less because I'm, because I can't just pray this away. So even recently you thought that when you were This is not recent. This is just how you grew up. How I grew up and then my early years working in the church setting. Okay. And even when I moved back to Michigan and worked for that nonprofit, like I had been through a, a hellish situation at the previous church I worked at and I felt like my supervisors at the nonprofit, one of the reasons I left is because I felt like they were over spiritualizing everything. And it's like, you should just be able, this shouldn't be bothering you. You just need to take this to prayer more and like telling me all this stuff. And, you know, I feel like you should have responded and be like, okay, so if I fall and hurt my back (laughs) and I have some kidney (laughs) pain, should I take that to prayer too? Or should I go to the doctor? Oh, Oh, go to the doctor. Okay, dummy. Yeah. Like, this is the most important thing in this whole body. Exactly. What are we doing here? Take care of it. So it was such a weird. That's really one of the biggest reasons why I left that job. I left that job without a backup plan. Like, I mean, let's face it. It was a nonprofit. I wasn't making much money. Sure, they provided my housing, but it was it was so weird. So I was just very uncomfortable with that view of the world. And um, this is a little bit of a rabbit trail. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking down our list yeah, of what we, we got, got to do. To go. I don't. No, it's fine. Just, so, just wrap it. But yeah. So all that to say, for those of you who are people of faith, and if you feel like going to see a mental health professional is somehow a lack of faith, it's not. In fact, you choosing to go to therapy shows faith. I think. It shows faith that God can work through that avenue as well. I won't point out what just happened. (laughs) (laughs) So all that to say. um, You said that twice already. I know, right? should probably move on. For me, I feel like in therapy, I didn't go this last week for obvious reasons. I was following up with my doctor. But um, when I go, I just have been sitting down and I do a lot of the talking which is new for me. And my therapist just listens. He started out by just listening and I would talk the entire session and then he'd be like, all right, well, that's all the time we have today. Well, now it's moved into, he'll interrupt me at certain points and he'll point out these connections that he's seeing in my story, connections to things that happen now. He's making connections to my childhood or to my adolescence So all the stuff that he's listened to up until this point, it's like he's paying attention. So that when I talk about something happening now, he's like, well, that's interesting. Let's explore this connection. Well, and and isn't it amazing how well they can remember that stuff? Like Heather, my therapist, she doesn't write anything down. And I'll be like, did I talk about this? She'd be like, (laughs) no. Yep. I'm like, are you? You're amazing. Right. I guess that's why they're they do what they do and get paid the good money. Seriously. Um so that has just been so helpful for me. I feel like when I go there and I talk, number one, just talking 
to a therapist feels good. Like you leave, I leave that room feeling lighter. Like I just got all the stuff off my chest. I'm not internalizing it and it's not festering in my mind and I'm not reacting negatively to people in my life because I've just been festering on things. I can just talk about it and it stays in that room and I can walk out and continue on with my life. That was the first benefit I saw. And now as we're moving into this new phase where he's actually talking more and giving insight, he is picking up on connections that I didn't even see. Mm. And like things that happened as a kid that I've referenced in previous sessions, he'll tie those into what I'm experiencing now. And he's like, let's explore this connection. And so we just talk about it. And I leave that room. I feel like not only have I talked through things, but I'm making sense of my life. Yeah. And that just feels really good. Yeah. And feedback from me, I have noticed um, I, we don't bicker as much. Yeah. It's true. I mean, and, and again, I'm the cause of most of it, <laughs> but maybe you were. Uh, you might have been the cause, but I was not ever one. Like, seeking resolution was never my goal. Yeah, I feel like I I would just pull it on and make it drag on. Yes, that's what it was. And now I'm noticing that, not that you're not necessarily doing that, but I don't know. It just just feels like Megan and I were talking, I don't know, off the podcast and just like, yeah, we were, you know, things are just going. We're just kind of doing our thing. You know what I mean? And so I was like, you know what? That, That therapy is working. Not to say that, again, that mine isn't working and... And you're the cause of all the fights because I cause a lot of them, but um, it just feels like it's been working. And I, I feel the same thing with just being when you yeah. leave there, you know, you just kind of sure. leave it in the room. So real quick with mine, um, you know, struggling with a lot of things. Uh, just uh, I talked about earlier about being saying you and arguments. You did this. You did this. Even though they didn't do this, I need to start working on not applying blame to everything yeah. or some other people. And then um, Heather brought up EMDR again, and I didn't have the greatest experience with it. Obviously you all know that our listeners, but I'm kind of a control freak. And so with EMDR, no. shut up with EMDR, um, you kind of just lay there and she asks questions and she, she'll say, tell me about that. And I'm feeling bad that when she asked me those questions, I didn't know it. I didn't, I felt bad saying I don't have anything and it just kind of stressed me out and apparently that's normal. And so I might try it again. If you're interested in what EMDR is, it's kind of look it up online. It's kind of basically um, pulling a lot of stuff from your childhood without quite being hypnotized. It's kind of, kind of like that. Like you're uh, on a train and you're watching the things go by. You're not really in it, but you can kind of see, what's happening and, and trying to pull things out. It's kind of just tapping into your unconscious. Yeah. Because there's a lot there. Yeah, and basically, obviously, the issues that I have in my life, even though I'm still responsible for whatever I do, is based on what happened when I was a kid. Sure. So so bottom line. Hmm. But So we got a, uh email from a fan, and it was so exciting to get, not for her, but for us. Oh, we, absolutely. We, we, you know, our goal for this podcast is just to, if we reach some people and, and people, whatever, get something out of it, then it was successful. Mm -hmm. And we honestly, in the, in the podcast world in general, not just us, we don't get a lot of feedback. Yeah. We don't get a lot of that was, I mean, yeah, Larry always says that's a great show, which, and I know he means it, but sure. And when he reaches out, it's important too, but we're friends outside of the podcast too. So and uh, when we get people that, you know, this person that emailed us, I don't know who they are. Yeah. I mean, we see our numbers go up every week and that's cool. It's like, oh, wow, we've reached 6,000 listens. So there's potentially 6,000 people that have tuned in. We hear from maybe, I don't know, 5% of them if we're lucky. Oh, man. Maybe less than that. Yeah. So all that, man, I got to stop saying all that to say. That's my crutch tonight. But I'm glad you caught it. I know, because I knew if I didn't, you would. (laughs) But if you are listening to our show, and if this does mean something to you, please drop us a line. That's what this fan did. She just uh, got on our website and found the contact us form. Uh, Use it. I mean, even if it's just to say, hey... My name is so and so, and I live in so and so. I mean, we just love to hear from our yeah. listeners. So, but uh, she wrote in with um, 
just a really good email. Uh, I'll just read it. It's pretty short. But this really gets at the heart of what we're trying to do. She says, I know you have talked about different kinds of therapists and techniques on your podcast, and your wives and other guests have talked about different kinds as well. If I have never been to therapy and want to go, how would I even go about finding a therapist and the type of therapy that might be good for me? Thanks for your advice. And then she signs off with her name. Ooh, you almost did I it. Almost didn't. said it. You even revealed the gender. I was going to keep it as oh, they. Yeah. Well, you know. But well, no, so that is huge for us because what do I say? You come on our show, I'm going to peer peer pressure you into therapy. Yep. I have to tell you something too. Speaking of therapy, Alex, mm-hmm. you remember Alex? Yeah. That he's going to therapy now. Awesome. I thought he told me that. I know we went out to dinner a while back. I was like. No kidding. He probably needs it. Oh, I mean, we all do, but, well, but with his story. Hashtag healthy people go to therapy. Yes. But he definitely needs it. Yes. Um, I just walk through a lot. Yeah. But anyways. So, yeah, that was great for her to reach out. And um, so there was some follow-up. Is that something you want to share in the follow-up email or not? No? Okay. I mean, what we said? No, but you said she responded back. So She did. I haven't really had the time to process okay. through the entire message yet. That's fine. But uh, yeah, uh, she's just looking for some some help in finding a therapist, mm-hmm. um, and I'm so proud of her for for doing that. Um, so we're trying to help her out, yeah. and hopefully that it's successful. Yeah, and if there's other people who have that question, uh, the things we recommended was identify what you want to work on and kind of use that as your starting point. Right, and then Psychology Today has a therapist finder. And you can um, check, there's like check boxes of issues you want to talk about, and it will find therapists that cover that topic. So that's the advice we gave her. And then we also told her if you can give us a snapshot of what you're looking for, we can ask our therapists. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the best resource, right? I think, because we're clearly going to them for a reason. We trust them. Yep. They're going to steer us into the right direction. No, I'm not going to give you my therapist's name. <laughs> She's already busy enough. Yeah, seriously. And so, but yeah, uh, if you ever have any questions or just want to shoot us an email or message, please do. So we're going to jump into the God question. Uh, we, we call it a God question. Uh, we try to keep it not too much Christianese because I know everyone's not a Christian yeah. and that's cool. But uh, this is something that Ben pulled out. And uh, yeah, tell yeah. us what you think about this. So... Part of my story is I grew up very Christianese. Like my world was immersed in the church and in Jesus and all of that good stuff. And not that I find fault in that, but I feel like I just missed out on a lot of, I don't know. I feel like I saw the world through a very different set of glasses that was very idealistic and very um, filtered, honestly. It was just such a narrow view of the world yeah. that I grew up with, and I still claim my Christian faith 100%, but I'm not immersed in that fundamentalism, the, um, you know, absolutely everything you do has to be Christian. What does that even mean? Like, Christian music, Christian books, Christian t-shirts. Like, that was my <laughs> life growing up. I had a shirt that said, um, it was a picture of a lifesaver. But it said, Jesus is my life savior. I feel like that's a copyright infringement. I know. There were so many of those things. Uh, when I got to college and realized this isn't normal. <laughs> <laughs> You're wearing that shirt around all proud. Like, look at me, guys. Uh, but I got to college. And even at a Christian college, I started kind of noticing this isn't normal. And I read an article somewhere in it. Um, they called all that stuff Jesus junk, whether it's the WWJD bracelets or the Christian peppermints, the testaments, they call them. Never heard of that. Like, there are so many things like that. So that's what I grew up with. And because of that, I have lyrics from some of these Christian bands that pop into my mind occasionally. And with all the spare time I've had, I don't know why, but there's this song. First question for you. Have you heard of the band Audio Adrenaline? (laughs) This just shows. It's not DC Talk. (laughs) 
or uh, Switchfoot, Striper, or Skillet. Yeah, but those are bands I listen to now. That I, don't, I feel like they are very much Christian bands, though. It's so weird, though. Don't you feel like that's weird? Why that? Um, I don't know. I mean, like um, Thousand Foot Crutch. That was really loud. Sorry. Um, R.I.P. to your ears. That's what Eric always says. Um, Thousand Foot Crutch plays on the same station that plays uh, Rob Zombie and Ozzy Osbourne. And I think those. it's great. Yeah, I I do, but I always like Evanescence was Christian, and then they went yeah. non Christian. So I don't know. But anyways, I have not heard of Audio Adrenaline. Well, you're missing out. <laughs> okay, I'll get right on that. So they have a song that uh, is called "Man of God," and the whole premise of the song is they're kind of just. I hate to say whining, but it's kind of a slower song and it sort of sounds like whining. And there's a chorus that essentially says, sometimes I'm a man of God, sometimes I'm all right. And then they kind of dive into that and explore it. And that, for whatever reason, was playing in my head as I was sitting in my recliner recovering this week. And I was just thinking about that line. It was like, I don't know if I buy that. Um, Because... And here's why. I'll just jump into my answer, and then you can answer. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I feel like being a man of God is not something that is determined by my behavior. I think it's determined by what God did for me by sending Jesus. I don't want to get too Christianese and off topic, but for me, that's what the whole point of following Christ is all about, is and because I choose to follow that, that makes me a man of God. And it's regardless of how big of a jerk I am or if I blow it and, you know, and make a mistake. Am I still a man of God? Absolutely. Because it doesn't depend on what I do. It depends on what's been done for me already. And I have faith. And it's that faith that um, gives me a clean slate every morning. Yeah, my question is, what does man of God mean? Like, yeah. what is the definition? Because I feel like in those lyrics, I think they have maybe a different definition maybe. than what you do. Because sometimes I'm a man of God, sometimes I'm all right. So all right, meaning like I don't need God or... Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I guess I don't know. what I would be curious to what you think the definition of man of God. What does a man of God mean? When I hear man of God, I hear... And again, this is filtered through years of churchianity and everything else. But I hear somebody that is, um, you know, following after God. I to guess. me, it would be a pastor. A man of God is a pastor? Yeah, or a priest. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah, I just don't. I mean, but I do agree with the line of thinking. I mean, someday, well... I feel like, okay, so if you want to break it down, on Sundays I'm a man of God, but the rest of the week I'm all right, which is unfortunate because it should be it's like... Honest, but, it's but honest, but I would argue with that, though, because, again, what is it based on? Is it based on your behavior? Then Hell yeah. If it's based on behavior, then yeah, I'm in the same boat. I'm a man of God on Sundays. I'm hit or miss during the week. Why can't we do... Why is that such a struggle for... for obviously us and people in general why is that such a struggle for people to there's so many other distractions i think that's what it is it's not like we can download an app and talk to god i mean yeah i don't know i'm sure you think about it more and probably pray more than i do but uh it depends on the week (laughs) yeah i mean i guess but yeah that's that's interesting i I just really need what I mean. I guess we could Google what a man of God definition means, yeah, but, to see I mean, what it says. But I, I think that really kind of changes my answer. Um, man, we could go on a whole tangent about that. I know. Um, That's why I'm starting my own podcast. Oh yeah, what a good segue! <laughs> Do you want to talk right? about that? Well, hey, look at this. I just Googled "man of God." First page that comes up is Wikipedia. Man of God is podcast. a biblical title of respect applied to prophets and beloved religious leaders. Well, fine. I am right. Mm. But, I mean, I think the the lyrics from the band, they don't see it that way. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, they can't be talking about priests and pastors. I yeah, mean, because why? not everybody would be. But, I don't know. Really interesting. It's a good... Uh, see, I this is what I love about our friendship. 
because I grew up seeing things so differently. And then I put something on a Google Doc, and you come back with this very um, inquisitive question. What is it? Wait, what's a man of God? What does that even mean? And I have to go back and examine and try to answer that. What is the problem? I don't know what's going on. I'm like, normally there's ice in here, but like I'm opening it and it's just like, here, let me try it again. (laughs) I think normally the ice slows the flow and I don't Ah. quite put my lip far enough on it and I'm like dribbling (laughs) on myself. But no, I agree. That's that's a great part of the podcast because you never would have been like. You just assumed what it was, and you didn't think about what the definition and really could. That everybody else, you know, knows what it means too, right? So, <laughs> so guys, we would love your reviews. Uh, that really moves the needle for us, gets us an internet point. Not that we're trying to sell advertising, but if any, if anyone wants to advertise on our podcast, I'm yeah. not going to turn it down. Right? I just don't think we have the numbers yet. I mean, we're doing good. We're doing good, but that's not the point of us doing it. Um, you know, we pay for everything out of pocket, which. Thankfully, the GR Ride Chair, we get to use a lot of their equipment. So, thank you to that. But yeah, uh, check us out on Apple Podcasts, th- uh, Threads. You're an idiot. <laughs> Google Podcasts, Spotify. Those are the main ones, um, or Castbox or whatever. And anywhere that you can leave a review, do. Obviously, Apple moves the needle more, but I don't really care. If, if I saw a review somewhere else, I would be just as happy with it. We're not trying to always, you know, move the needle. We're just trying to. I guess we kind of are. We just yeah. want to get our show out to more people. Mm-hmm. So please do that um, and and send it to us. We'll highlight it. And uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll take a phone call and, and see. I don't know. Yeah. Who Come knows? On. But just do it. All right. We're going to jump to current events. I know, we, I know this was lengthy in regards to. Yeah, we're at 102 in. We might have to cut. Some I mean, we trimmed. Some, some of that is. Um, <laughs> intro and stuff like that but still but i knew this one was going to be long we haven't We've sat down for a month yeah no one yeah so um so a couple of these are videos i i apologize to the audio people that can't see it um but um this next one you kind of want to see and i'm going to post all these in the comment section or not the comment or the comment section of the podcast what do you call that the show, show notes. notes show notes eric always calls it so it's funny I know I talk about Eric all the time. I listen to his podcast. I'm all caught up. So I, I don't ever miss really any. And he says, when he started saying this, he said, I will leave it in the comments. And I always said to myself, it's not comments. It's show notes. Every time he said it. So this has been going on for like a month. And now I'm saying in the comments. In the comments. Before I say it's the show notes. So this one is about um, just a quick synopsis. There's a Florida coach, uh, Florida Gators football coach, and his wife travels a lot with them. And is involved with the kids in a weird way that every time she, uh, the kids get off the bus when they're coming home, she gives them a kiss on the cheek and a hug and, you know, welcomes them back. So when you watch the video, at first it seems okay. But as, uh, as you watch it, I got more and more uncomfortable towards the end of it. So I don't know if the audio will do justice. So that's why I check it out. Uh, when we post this podcast, it'll be in the show notes. Um, so we're going to play that and, uh, yeah, we'll be back. When Dan Mullen arrived in Gainesville, he said in order to turn the Florida football program around, he needed to change the culture. So he brought in new staff members to help him do that on the field. But according to Mullen, there's one coach at home that is also important to changing the culture, his wife, Megan Mullen. So as hundreds flock here for Gator Walk on game day, Megan Mullen is waiting for her husband and her children to arrive. And at first, maybe when I came in, they're like, whoa, who's this like blonde that's like around and always hugging me and whatever. But now they come up and hug me and talk to me before I can even get to them. Megan Mullen's not just a coach's wife or the first lady of Florida football. She is Dan Mullen's partner. Megan made it a point to make the players her priority, whether it be a hug or a kiss before game day or making sure the players understand. So you saw how she it's. It's not the kiss. It's what how she touches the guys. Like, it's very sexual. Yeah, kind of. It, it gets worse towards the end. This <laughs> that, that one was okay, but it gets worse. And she cares for them during the week. I'm just always ready to get the hug. Every time we get off the bus, she always ready to give us a hug, kiss on the cheek. That motivates us, man. And that's uh, just having somebody who uh, shows a lot of love like that. The, the way she showed love to us and the coaches, and, you know, it's just a good thing to have. 
a little like that, that sweet and kind. When we were here 10 years ago, was the same. Like, they are our children. So I have two at home, and then I have a furry baby and a big baby as a husband, and I've got 119 others. She's like the, uh, the co-head coach when it comes to trying to be around the players and, uh, you know, and pick them up. And, and she's always positive, always has a smile on her face. That's who she is, not just around the players, around, you know, I mean, she does that for me, always puts a smile on my face. Yeah, Dan calls me a coach. Um, I don't know. I know this. I got to have my dream job. I, I, I did that for 13 years. That was great. Last time I was here, whatever. But I wouldn't give up one second or one five-minute conversation after a practice on a Wednesday afternoon for anything else. Well, the biggest honor that can be bestowed upon us as a coach and a coach's wife is a parent and a student athlete deciding to come play for us and be part of our family. I'm probably tough on people and she's a lot more loving than I am. Whenever you're having a down day, she's like right there with a big smile on her face. To pick you right up. Oh, that you could feel safe here, knowing, like, being a recruit, just knowing that you would come from anywhere and feel comfortable here at Florida. Especially with somebody like me. I mean, my home is 12 hours away, so. Did you see that? She took her hand and, like, put it on the chest and then rubbed it down. Yeah. I, I, Creepy. Yeah. It's like having a, a second mother. They're college students, right? But there's, there's so much more demanded of them that anything I can do to you know, lift their spirits or just acknowledge something special they're doing. You know what? Their moms aren't here. They don't get to see them every day. But when I know they're doing something special, I try to, you know, I try to do that. You don't see that really in most programs. Like just be able to see that like and see the time she can take out her, her um, off time and write and write notes for every single player. You know, that it's sweet and it's kind. They came to Florida to win a national championship, but they also... I think deserve a family that just loves them more than the world and every day I want them to know how proud I am of them because they sacrifice so much and they work so so hard. I just I love everything they do. I mean they 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 listen to everything my husband says and they work, you know, they've they've played beyond their means probably even this year. You know what I mean? From trying to take them where they were before we got here to now and I will do anything for them. Um you know, because of it. I mean, they're just, they're so special. That's, that's weird. Yeah, it's its totally weird. Um, so I want to, so give me your feedback on that while I click on this article because I wanted to read some of the Twitter, um, what people have been saying about it. Uh, I, I don't know if I would be comfortable with that. Yeah. Like um, the whole, like, I'm trying to think of myself as a college student, and it's been a while. But just to have any woman, regardless of if it's a coach's wife or what, but to grab my face and to bring her face to mine, that seems a little odd. Now, if it was just – I didn't watch the video until just now. So when I read the headline, I thought, okay, that's kind of funny. She's just giving the players a little peck on the cheek as they get off the bus. Yeah. But no, this is like a full blown. I'm going to grab your face, and right? It, and it is a, it is a, it is on the cheek. I think it's more the hand yeah, action more than. So the, and I'm trying not to be negative about it because I this is, um, the the feel good stories are few and far between. And so yes. I know it's trying to be a feel good story, it's but it's a creepy story. <laughs> but people are like, this is some of the the pushback. Not going to tweet the picture going around, but Megan Mullen, wife of Gators coach, is, sex, is a sexual predator. Mm. Mm. White women, no, I don't know why I have to say. this. Th- people always throw race in there, but white women sexually harassing black men isn't cute or quaint tradition or whatever gross spin you want to put on it. Mm. So you all just let this lady violate these players out of tradition. This is disgusting. Uh, I'll have any nightmares about this. <laughs> Professor Mullen's wife, Megan, continues her tradition of kissing each student before they take their seats at class. Yeah. Um, that would be a little weird. Yeah, I mean, it's funny when I would download the YouTube video, the comments were turned off on it, and you don't see that very often. But clearly, they're getting a lot of negative feedback. And man, I don't know. Rightfully so. I don't think it's. I don't think it's very kosher. I mean, I hate to say this, but I bet you in a couple years something's going to come out, and she's been sleeping with one of those players. (laughs) I hate to say it. I mean, took even looking at that spin, I would be like. I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying again, I'm I'm trying not to be negative about it, but it's just so weird. How does that change the culture? I think it makes the culture I don't know, more toxic. Well, what if the players don't really want that but they don't feel like they can say no because it's the coach's position of power. 
position of power. Yeah. yeah. And then Megan, uh, uh, my wife, Megan, always says, what if that was a guy doing that to the girls? Well, not football, but uh, basketball team. Sure. Yeah. Would everyone be okay with that? Or exactly. would there be like lawsuits and everything? So yeah. just something to think about. But So weird. Yeah, very weird. <laughs> well, from that, we'll jump into something a little bit more not creepy. <laughs> um, I saw this video. Again, being in recovery mode, I watch a lot of YouTube and Facebook videos. I just get lost in these um, Facebook tunnels of <laughs> watching rabbit holes. recommended videos. And it's like, what else am I supposed to do? So I saw this one the other day and just cracked up laughing at it. This is basically... Um, I say that too, basically. I know. That's a crutch word for me. It is. It's basically a diss. So this is a video that compares two different styles of being a dad. Uh, a millennial dad versus, I guess, I guess you could call it a traditional Gen X, whatever dad. Yeah, it's not like, it's not the boomer thing where, that people are saying now, yeah. right? Like, you're a boomer. Yeah. That's, that's you don't different. don't that very much. Well, the boomer thing is new. The boomer? Yeah, people call you a boomer. So instead of like um you're just a you're just a boomer basically means you're an old person. A baby boomer, yeah. Yeah, but they just say the boomer. Yeah. That's a new trending thing. You would think you would know since you've been on the internet for the last two weeks. <laughs> right. All right, here's that video. Hey coach, come over here. He pulls that tomahawk swing thing again. I want you to bench him. He needs to learn a lesson. Coach, can you put my son in the pitch? No, I just he hasn't gotten a chance to pitch all game. Some of the other kids have been pitching, and I, I think my son should get to pitch too. Okay, friends, I will pick up your toys this time, but next time you have to do it, okay? Oh, God! I told you to clean this up 10 minutes ago. What's it still doing in front of my den? That's enough TV for you guys. Let's go do some activities. All right, kids, that's enough TV for you. Dad's going to watch the game. What do you think, kids? Should we hit the drive through Little Mickey D's? The old man needs a Big Mac. No, no, guys. We're not stopping at McDonald's. Too many GMOs. We'll swing by Whole Foods. And that's how the birds and the bees work, Keiston. I know a lot of the other second graders probably haven't gotten this talk yet from their parents, but I trust you. The birds and the bees? Don't they teach them that in school? Why do I have to tell them? <sighs> Fine. Michael, get on over here. We got to have a talk. Yeah, so your mother wants me to talk to you about this. So, some sometimes when a when a when a boy just tell your mother that I talked to you. How does that sound? All right, I'm gonna go get a beer. Do I need to pull this car over so that we can have a talk? That's it. I'm doing it. Do you think that was a good choice? Do you think that was a good choice that you chose? I think you should maybe choose a different choice than that you just chose. Okay, now apologize. Now you apologize. Now kisses and hugs. <laughs> Here we go. Hey. What did I say? Get out of the car. You're going to walk home. I'm sick of it. No, get get in the car. I'm not going to actually make you walk home. Your mom would kill me. But I am going to eat the rest of that burger. Get there. <laughs> you want to go to Kitty Land? We're not doing that today. Go play with that box over there. Guys, this isn't a box. It's a space shuttle. I'll go grab the washable non-toxic markers. Craft time! Babe, where's my safety scissors? Here you go, Keiston. Your non-dairy, no-crust grilled cheese. Oh, you want something else? Well, I'll make you something else. All right, kids. Dad's cooking. Uh, I think we're just going to have leftovers. You don't get a choice. We're having leftovers, and you're going to like it. This isn't a restaurant. Back in my day, we only got one meal a day, and we didn't even have forks. We had to eat them with our hands. Hey, here we go, Keiston. We're just here to have fun, bud. Just having fun. You just, you're just playing with your friends. This is fun. Everyone's a winner today. You guys even want to win out there? You want second place. Second place is first loser. Remember that. Come on. What are we doing out there? Open your glove. Open your glove. We talked about it. You want to go to the zoo this weekend? We got a whole zoo in the backyard. Rabbits, squirrels. Oh, let's go roller skating. <sighs> That's bad. Hey, bud, don't take the bubble wrap off. That's for your safety. I know not all the other kids are wearing it, but their parents don't care about them. Get up, walk it off. Just rub some dirt on it, all right? Come on, get back out there. What's going on? Talk to dad. Dad's listening. Let's have a convo. Let's have a little dish sesh right now. I don't know. Go ask your mom. What did Sharon do with my bush light? Kids, have you seen the bush light? She put it in the fridge in the garage. I'll be back. Hey, are you guys wearing your seatbelts? Both of them? Put both seatbelts on. Yeah, that seatbelt's broken. Just like hang on to the handle or something up there. Don't tell your mother though. Homework? What do you mean homework? Back in my day, 
That's exactly what it was. Work at home. Now go clean the garage. No, you don't need a new iPhone. Back in my day, we didn't even have iPhones. We had iPods. It's like an iPhone with only music. And it wasn't touchscreen. It had buttons. These kids don't know anything. Oh no, I'm becoming my father. Oh yeah. <laughs> so how which one do you resonate with sorry if that was really loud y'all if you were listening live i went to the bathroom and i looked at the uh the old uh what do you call that the levels and it was like blasting so <laughs> if anyone is still watching live you probably don't have a year anymore right um to be honest i kind of i'm a millennial dad i think how are you do you wear the airpods no i don't have airpods i know but I do have a beanie that kind of looks like that beanie. I kind of feel like I'm in between. You are. I mean, much. I'm not going to tell my kid if they got actually got her is to suck it up and rub, to, rub, rub some dirt, dirt on, on it. it. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm not really close to the center. I'm probably more towards the millennial dad, but I do have tendencies of the other one. Yeah, and I think both both are beneficial. Absolutely. Like, yeah, the way he said it, like, so let's have a dish sex. D- dish <laughs> What do you say? Let's have a dish. A dish sesh. Dish. Oh, dish sesh. That's hard. Apparently, <laughs> y'all know I've, I'm, I have. I have a trouble with words. Um, but I, you know, I want my kids to talk to me like that. I want those moments. I wouldn't mm-hmm. call it that because I can't say it. But, right. um, but again, you know, I definitely have moments where I'm like, let's watch the game. What yeah. are you guys doing? You guys are doing your screens. Okay, I want to watch the game. Not you know. So, yep. but I think I think both have pluses and minuses. Definitely. So, and I think too it um, it boils down to connection. Like I feel like the millennial dad in that video came across as having that connection with his kids. Yeah, and that's what I want. But at the same time, I need to be firm sometimes. Well, and- I, th- I think what that portrays is that millennial dad is, um, and we all know parents like that. And, I, and, it, and if you are one, I'm sorry, this is going <laughs> to offend you. You worship your kids. Yeah. And, that's and the center of your universe. That's just not what you're supposed to do. No. Um, now, if your marriage is 100% perfect, I guess you can do that. But they shouldn't be the center of your attention. Yes. Do I do everything basically for my kids? Yeah, I do. But I don't put them at the center of my attention. Yes. And we need to prepare our kids for the world. Yes. We don't need to prepare the world for our kids. Right. There has to be a balance. Yes, mm-hmm. you don't want to show them, um, you know, where, what, why did I see? Or maybe it was in this video, the sex ed one. I must yeah. have been going to the bathroom. But where they were like in second grade. Yeah, we don't need to talk about sex ed in, in second grade. Sure. Um, but at the time, you need, do need to talk about it. Yes. You don't need to be the other dad where he says, ah, Just ask go your, talk mom. your mom. Yeah. Go ask your mom. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, is there a video for this? No, that was your article. And then uh, okay. I put the counterpoint to it. Right. So, um, again, we'll post all these. Um, the article is Trauma is not your fault, but healing is your responsibility. Um, so I'm just kind of kind of read through some of this, hopefully not screwed up too much. <laughs> it's not too long, but what happened to you was not your fault. It was not something you asked for. It was not something you deserved. What happened to you was not fair. You're merely collateral damage on someone else's warpath and an innocent bystander who got wrecked out of proximity. See, that's, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't think I do either. So, so a lot right. of this is right up my alley for my life. So that's kind of when I want to read it. Yeah. We're all traumatized by life. Some of us from egregious wrongdoings, others by unprocessed pain and sideline emotions. No matter the source, we are all handed a play of cards and sometimes they are not a winning hand. Yet what we cannot forget is that even when we are not at fault, healing in the aftermath will always fall on us. And instead of being burdened by this, we can actually learn to see it as a rare gift. Healing is our responsibility because if it isn't, an unfair circumstance becomes an unlived life. What does that mean? I don't know. (laughs) See, like some of this is kind of heady. Yeah. (laughs) Healing is our responsibility because unprocessed pain gets transferred to everyone around us. Oh, that's like my statement. And we are not going to allow what someone else did to us become what we do to those we love. Yeah, healing is our responsibility because we have one. We have this one life, the single shot to do something important. 
Healing is our responsibility because if we want our lives to be different, sitting and waiting for someone else to make them so we'll not actually change the sitting and waiting for someone else to make them so we'll not act that doesn't seem right. So we'll <laughs> not make them so we'll not actually change them. There should be a comma there, right? Uh, I don't know. It's it will, a really clunky sentence. It will only make us dependent and bitter. Healing is our responsibility because we have the power to heal ourselves, even if we have pre- previously been led to believe we don't. Healing is our responsibility because we are uncomfortable and discomfort all, almost always singles a place in life in which we are slated to rise up and transform. Wow, this is long. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. It's it's good. Yeah, each each one is like says healing is our responsibility because and um, Ben's going to talk about the counter, but I t- I truly believe it is. And again, you can blame for what you are. Yes, you had trauma, but it is your responsibility. Not not to say that you you don't need help somewhere else for someone to help you. So I don't want to say I don't think it's saying it's your responsibility. You have to do it yourself. I just think it's saying you need to get your shit together. Otherwise, you're going to affect other people's lives. It's true. Yeah. And, and if I didn't, if it wasn't my responsibility, I would just blame my my family and my mom and my dad and just be like, well, pff, it's their fault. Mm-hmm. And I have trouble doing that because, yeah, it happened, but I still am an adult. I still make adult decisions. So Yeah. And the counterpoint, it's funny because... Um, my wife actually sent me, not knowing that you had sent that article to me, she sent or Sorry. posted on Facebook, I can't remember, um, but she shared a counterpoint to that post. Well, all I saw was the picture. Oh, yeah. I think that's all she sweared. Sweared. Shared. Shared. Yeah. I think it is, but that picture came from this post. So, um, and first of all, I 100% agree with everything you just said. So, Well, that person said. Yes, right. Uh, I, I agree with the sentiment of that article that healing is your responsibility. It absolutely 100% is. But I think there's also power in just having that opening statement, trauma is not your fault, period. And ending it there. And I think there's just power in that statement. But how can you move on from that? Trauma's not your fault. Sweet. Great. Well, right. But then what? Then instead of but, it's an and. and. And healing is your responsibility. The but, it just, that word but is a hard word because we can always come back with um, but statements. And the word but is often well intentioned, but it carries a lot of weight responsibility and i think that's what the author is saying in his counterpoint to this um folks who've experienced trauma and are familiar with the dismissive but that often follows for example trauma is not your fault but i should have fought back or but i shouldn't have gone to that party but i should have seen the red flags but i should have obeyed my mom and maybe she wouldn't have done that or but what were you wearing or but healing well is i feel like all those buts are something like someone that was raped yeah you know it doesn't really apply to, i know you added the i, I should sure have talked did. back to my mom or whatever it could have been anything right but but then you're kind of, yeah no i get it so i feel like but we often use in this article he's obviously putting it on trauma victims you know that could have been raped or whatever else But I do think we put, I know know with the limited trauma I've had, like the stuff that went down in the church was not okay. And for the longest time, I just kind of looked at it as well, but I should have been more, you know, I should have worked better with the pastor or I would put things on myself, but I should have done it this way. Yeah. And I think we we do that a lot. And so I think to just end that statement at trauma is not your fault, period. And then moving into an and instead of a, but it's semantics. And I know it's sort of silly to split hairs over words. And, and I'm glad he does say just, you know, change it to, and healing is possible and you have the capacity to heal. But I feel like this is such a millennial thing. It is like, it's like, Oh, it's not your fault. Well, no shit. And why are we changing one word? 
but he only, but oh god <laughs> this is I knew this would create good it, discussion well it just it, <laughs> I totally agree with him but I mean are we really it's why I say it's a millennial thing what are we going to say in like 30 years like I'll be like 70 <laughs> that's a gen x no 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 but um I just feel like oh we're changing one word and so that's a millennial thing. We're going to change this word, and it's yeah. all better. It still is the same thing. It's a very millennial thing to change language. Yeah, and it's the still you still have to do the exact same work regardless if it says, um, sorry, um, but healing is your responsibility. Just changing one word, yeah. I don't know. But it's a really good discussion. I and he closes his article with, "I assume the original idea was offered with the best intention. However, language is powerful." And I agree with that statement. Mm-hmm. Maybe that makes me a millennial. Maybe not. No. And but is often dismissive and may do more to reinforce trauma psychology or no, trauma physiologically. Nope. Whatever. Physiology. There we go. <laughs> We're doing great with words. That language, it's man. Usually you're a rock star with them. <laughs> then to create a context for healing. I also recognize that each person's experience is unique. Such a millennial statement. <laughs> And the original Your phrase journey. may be helpful for some folks. If that's the case for you, I validate millennial word your experience and celebrate millennial word what works for you. If, however, you felt uneasy when you encountered the original phrase, I'd love to hear your reaction to my rambling thoughts above. Well, you just got all of our thoughts, buddy. Yeah, and there's uh, we'll share this actual link. It'll link to his post, and there's a lot of comments. It's a really strong discussion. Yeah, it goes back and forth, you know. Um, it's still all, what it boils down to, regardless of semantics of words, it's it's still all important. It is. Um, Healing, absolutely, 100% is your responsibility. You are not going to be healed by just pretending the issue's not there. And I'll go out on a limb with my Christian faith and say, you're not going to be healed by just praying about these bad feelings you're having. Like, you need to go work through this shit. Well, it's a full, it's a full spectrum of help. Yeah, it's God. Exactly. It's if you're religious, it's God, it's therapy, it's good friends and family. Um, but it, yeah, so healing is your responsibility. And to tie it in with my life now, healing absolutely is my responsibility with my physical injury. Like I could go out and go back to work tomorrow and really mess up the healing process and be in rough shape. Like it's on me to follow the orders. If I want to get better, these are the things I need to do. It's very similar to your mental health. If you want to get past this roadblock, this impasse that you can't get by, you're going to have to do the work of healing. And it's hard, but it's totally worth it. Two things. One, did you like how I pronounce egregious right? Did you see that word coming up? You're like, oh. I "I can't wait for this one. He's going to slaughter. And then this guy, is his Facebook page is Room to Thrive Secular Therapy and Coaching. I thought it was odd that he... Yeah. Specified that he's not Christian again, millennial. <laughs> Maybe I feel we should. Like this guy's an utter millennial. I don't know how famous he is, but it'd be interesting to see if we could get him. Uh, although get him on our podcast. Yeah, he might I mean, just listen. he's got like seven thousand people that like his page. So he's. Oh, and your wife's one of them. That <laughs> just says Andy is. Joy likes. Well, it's because he's a therapist. So. Yeah, a secular therapist. Yeah, but yeah. Maybe I'll reach out to him, get him on. It'd be a good discussion. It would be. Um, where are we at here? Okay, so real quick, a couple of pictures, um, <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to skip that one. Well, okay. Let's just do you want? Let's skip the pictures. Okay. I feel fine. like they're not as good. So Ben, uh, share this article or this video about what anxiety looks like. Do you want to give a preview of that? Yeah. So this is another video that I found today while I was in my recliner. Yeah. After I was all prepped. Yeah. My favorite thing in all my podcasting, since I (laughs) usually load everything into the software, is stuff right before. Like, I want. Hey, I found this. Oh, that's right. We have the game. We have this game we're going to play. And I'm like, he's like, I'll do it when I get there. I'm like, no, I want to get it done so I can go relax on the couch knowing it's done. And then he sends me this video. Yeah. That's okay. So I figured it out. uh, But this video, again, um, is came through my recommended videos based on my viewing. So it totally makes sense. It's about anxiety. So (laughs) 
Not that anxiety is funny, just that it came as you recommended. Yep. You watch this video. We think you might enjoy this one. Right. That's kind of the hole it was going down. Yeah. It's so fun when you have nothing better to do just to watch YouTube. And... Right. Because you could probably find some cool stuff. Oh, yeah. So my son does that, too. He yeah. will get lost in YouTube rabbit holes. So I do that on Facebook. Because what you'll watch a video, and then what happens is other videos are underneath, and they're kind of associated a little bit. So you kind of say, oh, man. Yep. Anyway, so this video is about anxiety. Just to give you a millennial disclaimer, if curse words are offensive to you, you might want to press mute. Is there any F word in here? There are. Yeah. Oh, well. I get this text message that says, Hey, just hey, at first, followed by that godforsaken ellipses taunting me while they're still typing. And I'm thinking of everything that could possibly follow. Hey, the house is on fire. Even your father. You're going to be a mother. Anxiety Anxiety makes makes you see things things that aren't there. (laughs) Even at the party. Anxiety Anxiety makes it seem like like I'm I'm not always there. Anxiety is that person at the party that, that no, no one invited, invited who keeps asking, is the music too loud? Are we breaking the fire Will your code? neighbors call the cops? Then calls the cops to ask if it's okay that we're having this party. Anxiety is looking for your keys while you're holding your fucking keys. Anxiety is getting a voicemail like, So, I need to talk to you? (laughs) Call me back. (laughs) Of course you need to talk to me, but thanks for not telling me why. Also, who the fuck still leaves voicemails? Anxiety, that too. Anxiety calls me in the middle of the night like, Hey! Yeah. Remember that one time you called your fourth grade math teacher Mr. Mitchell mom? Or that time you ordered pizza and accidentally said I love you before hanging up the phone? <laughs> and you didn't realize it'd be the same person delivering your pizza? Nope! Totally forgot that happened until, until now. now. Anxiety is thoughtfulness is hella extra evil twin. Anxiety, anxiety is so extra. extra. Anxiety is having your friends give you advice about how to cure your anxiety. Which, which only, only makes you hyper aware that you're a burden for having anxiety. anxiety. Like, like, okay, uh, yes, uh, let me try your yoga studio because, because I don't want to offend you and then silently implode because I'm forced to sit still with all my deepest darkest thoughts. <laughs> Anxiety is a funny thing. Until it's not. Until you're sitting at home alone. And your friends are texting. Asking, asking why you're not there. Anxiety is being trapped on a speeding train. Heading, heading for a cliff and, and not, not being able, able to escape because you're the conductor. It's trying to be the conductor to a choir with left and right hands that belong different bodies. bodies. It's having a chorus of voices in your head where, where everyone is singing but no one knows the lyrics. But, but no, no one, one knows, knows the, the lyrics, words where you never feel, you in, sync never feel in sync with yourself. In sync with yourself, oh, anxiety. Oh, it's constantly oh, apologizing oh, for things that sorry. are not your fault. Sorry. So you start apologizing for your own existence. Oh, it's having to compare sorry. anxiety sorry. to everything sorry. else. Sorry. Sorry. You know, some people will still see it as a punchline. Anxiety, anxiety makes me tiptoe around the truth, truth to this poem. The, the truth th- is, most days, anxiety is something I can manage. Until I see my bed more than I see my friends. Until it leads me to depression and I begin to question living. If I down enough drinks. I can drown out the doubts, but, but I can't, can't drown out your questions, questions that keep me from, from being honest. honest. What have you got to be so anxious about? Why can't about? you just relax? You're doing this to yourself. It's all in your head. We, we know. know. But talking about it helps. Especially, especially when no one talks about it. Oh. Especially when, when where you come from, from, you're not supposed to talk about it. Oh. <laughs> so good. It. It was really good. I uh, uh, at first I was like, yeah, but then I kind of got I kind of got wrapped up into it towards the end. Yeah, and- they really nail it home at the end. The first half, it's basic college anxiety, but then it gets real deep. Yeah, um, I I have a question about anxiety. Um, do you think that's kind of a millennial thing to to? It seems like everyone has it. And I think everyone has it to a certain level. Yes. But I always feel weird. Like earlier when I talked about I'm at a level, let's say, 60. And I, yeah. I don't want to say anxiety, but mm-hmm. but I'm at this level of – and like you said, you always say you're intense. And that's like a nice way of saying <laughs> that. You know what I mean? Which You're high strung. Yeah, well, that's not a nice way to say it. <laughs> but my point is I wonder if we're all just – use if people use that as a quote-unquote crutch. Yes. I can see that. In our culture, I do think that it, it's overused, and I th- I think it's overuse takes away the power from how bad it really is. 
Like, it is a thing in my life. And I can identify, maybe not so much with the first half where they were talking about parties and everything else, but the latter portion about how you know, overthinking everything and out of, you're just out of sync. Like, um, it's a real thing for me. So, yes, I think that it becomes one of those, oh, you're just having anxiety. You'll be okay. And people throw around that anxious word. Like, I can't take this test. I'm too anx- anxious right now. I need a safe place. Yeah. I don't buy all that. I mean, there are true people that have that level of anxiety that they need that safe sure. place. But I think also what, what it does is it, it, it um, it changes uh, the way it reacts. Like you kind of maybe overthink stuff. I just overreact with my words. That's what sure. anxiety does for me. Now, I don't know if that's anxiety or I'm just an a-hole or maybe I have Maybe it's both. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it is. Or I haven't worked through whatever it is. But I just thought I'd throw that out there because I feel like we see a lot, which is good because it has yes, to do with mental health. So exactly. I, I'm happy to talk about it. But here's the thing is all this talk about anxiety – are you just bringing it up so you can have an excuse to not get better? Well, we talked. Or are to, you bringing it up because you want to get better and you're going to deal with it? True. That's really the. Or just bringing it up as an excuse to get out of something. Yeah. And exactly. we talked about that school that allows the kids to have a mental health yes. day. And we, I can't remember your take on it. I was cool with it. Um, I think it's I'm great. Mixed. I'm in the middle mixed, on it, which is surprising to me. So, but yeah, it's, and that's really, and this is something that I've had to work through on a professional level um tyler my boss is very aware that i have anxiety and he he will not let me just get away with oh i didn't do that because i was anxious about it he's like you need to find ways to still get things done yeah even if you're dealing with anxiety it can't be a cop-out and i think that's it's so funny because tyler is like the definition of a millennial otherwise hey he likes the office so shut the (laughs) you know what up yes so um for him to say that and to have that hard line for me and it feels like a hard line but it's really not but well he's just challenging you to be he he knows you're not to the point where like if he says that you're going to pine rest yeah he just knows he he he's he took some time to get to know you because I know that wasn't happening right at the beginning. And so he's like, okay, Ben can do this. So yeah. I, I think it's good to a point to challenge you to do that. Obviously, if you came back to him and said, Ooh, man, I'm not kidding, man. This is, you know, yeah. then it might be a different discussion. And again, so. that's what happened with my back. Like when I first told him it was hurting, he's like, well, what can we do to st- still have you be focused and doing what you need to do? Yeah. But then when we realized how bad it was, he was like, yeah, we'll see you in December. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, anxiety very much, if you're using it as a cop-out, not cool. Right. Don't just use it to get out of your responsibilities. Or don't just say you have anxiety and leave it at that. Like, If you have this problem of being wrapped up in your head, worrying about everything, there's hope for you and there's help. It doesn't yes. have to be like that. Yeah. Like. You could take a multifaceted approach, medicine, therapy, whatever the case may be. You can get past those hot yoga. Thoughts. I wouldn't recommend it for myself, but if that's did they talk thing, about hot yoga in the video? Did. Maybe regular yoga. Yeah. <laughs> so, do we need any prep for this game? Do you need to bring something up? Um, this should be pretty quick. So, my son, I mentioned his YouTube um excursions how he likes to watch (laughs) random videos as well we have this in common so the other day um going back to the millennial dad one of the things that i do is i try to get breakfast with my son once a week that's not a millennial dad that's a good that's so not millennial well no okay you're just trying to connect with your kid yeah that's Let's, not millennial. Okay. The over connecting with your kid is millennial. Yes. And this isn't over connecting. <laughs> no. Over connecting would be every day taking him to oh, breakfast. Yes. Yes. So we're lucky if we get once a week just because of everything that's been going on. But I was feeling good Friday morning and I was up. So it was like, hey, let's go grab breakfast. And it was so good. Like we just talked about random things. He told me about basketball told me about some of the girls at school. Like, it was just open communication over breakfast. Um, and then he pulls out his phone, and he's like, so, Dad, Looney Tunes, how do you spell it? And so I was like, L-O-O-N-E-Y-T-O-O-N-S. 
He's like, nope, that's not right. Well, like, you already spoiled one of them. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean that's not right? That's how it is. I grew up watching that show. And so he pulled out his phone and he showed me. And we Googled it. And every result had the correct spelling. And it was not what I had in my head. So there are so many of these things that we think are so, but they're not. So after that, I did some more research and found some more. And um, the name of that effect is, they call it the Mandela effect. Because I guess a lot of people were under the assumption that Nelson Mandela had died long before he actually did. Do you know when he died? 2013. Oh, wow. Yeah. So pretty recently. And people think that he was like, he died 20, 30 years ago. Mm. So we get this idea in our head that we think is right. And there's so many people that subscribe to that idea, even though it's wrong. So I feel like that's, uh, that could be applied to sound uh, song lyrics. Yes. Megan and there I, are some. there's a joke that um, a song that I thought it was something for probably, well, 35 years. Yeah. Are you a star Wars fan? Am I? Yeah. Yeah. There's one that we'll get to that you'll probably be like, what, really? Or yeah. maybe you won't. I don't know. All right. So, so we've got some pictures. And again, we'll put these in the show notes for those of you who can't see. But the first one we have here, Curious George, um, there's a picture of him. One has a tail. The other doesn't. Oh, I didn't even. I literally was going back and forth, could not figure out what was different. <laughs> Which one is right? I think without the tail. You're correct. But there are people who swear that he has a tail, but he doesn't. Interesting. So Fruit of the Loom is another one. It's a logo we all grew up seeing. Which is the correct image? Is it the one with the cornucopia behind the fruit, or is it just the fruit? <laughs> I was going to call it a Capricorn. I knew it was something like that. <laughs> Aren't you glad I pronounced that I'm, word for yeah, you? I'm thinking it's the fruit without the cornucopia. Wow, well done. You said you said the word right and you got the answer right. Two for two. So and then Forrest Gump, this is a quote. Um sorry, I don't I, I can pull it up. That That's wasn't fine. on the picture. It wasn't. <laughs> I was wondering why it was just a single picture. Well, you know, just making things fun. Oh, I it's uh it was the quote life. Yes. I don't want to mess it up and no. give it away, but let me get to it. Yeah, these are kind of fun. I always I always Look at these. Well, like, even the Curious George one, I was like, I swear. What's the difference? There, I, I don't see what's the difference. That's that's trouble. So, life is like a box of chocolates? Or was the quote, life was like a box of chocolates? First one. Nope. Oh, I was two for two. Go back and watch it. And he says, life was like a box of chocolates. I like how you draw it there. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So, yeah. And then, huh. who is this guy? I don't know. It's What's his name? C-3PO. Okay. Which picture is right? The one where he has a silver leg or not a silver leg? I'm going to say not a silver leg. Nope. Silver leg. I should have I should have just by... I should have picked the silver leg. I need to go back and look at that. I know. Like, I feel this like makes he, me question everything. I feel like he may have gotten injured or the leg got blown off. So I remember at some point they cobbled him together in one of the movies. Interesting. See, I'm not that big of a fan, so I wouldn't know. Uh, Febreze. How do you spell Febreze? Which one's correct? F-E-B-R-E-E-Z-E -E -E or F-E-B-R-E-Z-E? -E. Two E's or one E? One E. You're right. I went with the obvious. I always thought it was two E's. Although the one on the left looks normal. It does. I, I'm not going to lie. I looked at that. I'm like, that looks like a normal bottle. But no, it spelled that. Oh, I'm going to screw this one up. Oh, no, I don't think I am. Skechers. Does it have a T? Yes. Nope. It doesn't? No T in Skechers. Oh, the other one looks so wrong. I know. When you put them next to each other. That one looks like so wrong. I'm going to Google it just because I'm really questioning that as well. Are you? <laughs> Thank you. It is definitely no, no tea. tea. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. So there's all these things that we think we know, but we don't. And we're not the only ones. And honestly, I forgot what you said about Looney Tunes, so I'm going to guess. I don't remember what you said because I was, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> Probably looking at something else. When yeah, you're that's right. Every time we do intros and outdoors, Ben and I do other things like whatever, look at social or whatever. Yep. Um, so it's Looney with a T U N E S or T O O N S. 
and yeah, T O O N S. I'm gonna go T U N E S. You are correct. Oh. But when my son asked me, it was like a duh. It's T O O N S. Like Looney. L O O N E Y. And I was like, that is what it is. They and I was like, well, they changed Looney Tunes recently, so maybe they just changed the spelling. And my son, he's like, Nope, they didn't. I'm like, really? <laughs> so then we both pulled out our phones and Googled it, and sure enough, he was right. So All right, the Star Wars one. Yes. Is the famous oh, quote I think I know this one. Is it Luke, I am your father, or I am your father. Second one. Yep. Yeah. But everybody who quotes that line, they say yes. Luke. Like when you speak into a fan, I don't yes. know if it was a thing. Yes. But that was a thing for me growing up. You yes. would speak in front of a fan and say Luke. Luke. <laughs> but that's not even in the quote. Like people or, added that in. That's so funny. I remembered that one, so I knew yeah. I'd be okay. And last two. And then Snow White. This one threw me for a loop. Is it mirror, mirror on the wall? Who is the prettiest of them all? Or is it magic mirror on the wall? Who is the prettiest of them all? It's magic mirror. It is. Yeah. But when in my head, I've always said mirror, mirror on the wall. Yeah. In fact, I did too, but I almost called them Nolte. Sully's got an old, old book of um, like Disney classics. And uh, we've been reading it's like a, a a synopsis of each uh, fairy tale, so it's like okay. maybe like ten pages, and I remember that. Nice. And then the last one, the Monopoly guy, does he have a monocle? No. You are right. He does not. Yes. But I always thought he did when I read that. I was like, I You're feel like it me. just it fits him. That's why. Yeah. Just that and that monocle pitch. Monopoly, like they sound similar. Yeah. So, yeah, all these things that people think are true, they're not there. That's that's cool. That's really cool. It just tricks our brain plays on us. Right. Um, Just real quick, again, check out our social. Ben and I have decided we need to talk to Eric about pushing either YouTube or Facebook. You know, we we post a lot of stuff. So if you guys like that stuff or have any feedback like, ah, it's too much or this is dumb, I mean – we're just doing it to try to get conversation going and thinking in your brain. Mm-hmm. Uh, and any feedback would be lovely. I saw that we had a comment and I got so distracted. You know, honestly, it. on GR that day, I I, bang, I said, I, I'm not looking at comments <laughs> from here out to the rest of the podcast. And you know what? It went much better for right? me. It went oh, way know. better for me. I know. I just get too wrapped up in it. No, I do too. I think we botched every transition this episode. Yeah, we need to go back <laughs> and talk about transitions because, like, <laughs> it's funny because Jason was like, "Our plan for the new year is we need to do better." Yeah, transitions. before we started recording, but like current events says outro Ben, and then Mandela Effect Games says intro. Well, it shouldn't be that. It should be flips. Whoever does the outro, the other person should do the intro. Yes, because then it just. Yes. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> but unfiltered finale. So this is yeah. where we kind of talk about a new con- connection was formed. Um, just somebody that was out in the world um, that you were like, oh, that was really cool. I, You know, you met him. It doesn't mean you become friends, but it was just like that was a cool moment yeah. in time. Because we all have those. It's almost like I think they call it serendipity. You're just like. It's a big word. I know. I need to Google it. Do, do you, it. Do you know what serendipity means? No, but I've heard of it before, and it sounds like very happy. Oh, it, it's it's a great word. I didn't even spell it right. Serendipity. There we go. The occurrence and development of events by cha- by chance <laughs> in a happy or beneficial way. Okay. So that's... So it is a happy word. That I feel like we need to put that in the unfil- un- ugh, unfiltered finale every time because that kind of sums up what we're yeah, talking about. It's just one of those moments where you meet somebody and you're like, whoa, and you walk away with either something that you learned or it just changed the way you saw something or it was just one of those moments where you're like... Do you ever like walk away from that and you're like, I wish I would have exchanged contact or yes. or you're like, I could have not witnessed to them, but you know... Giving them a business card or yeah. just something where, like, oh, yeah, down the road you could have connected and maybe it would have been a good either a good relationship or it could benefit you somehow or yeah. you could benefit them. Yeah, early in our show, I had driven like way back a year ago. I drew, I drove 
I drew. I swear he's. I did not see him take pain meds during one of the video. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I drove a sick to a retreat, like a. It's a Sikh. Sikh. I did it again. What? The, did you see me look up when you said Sikh? Yes. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> a Sikh? I don't know. S I K H. I'm just going to spell all the words I can't say oh, and you man. figure out how to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm going to go home and have a B A G E L with cream cheese when I and wrap it. B E E R. <laughs> Seriously. So, but yes, I wish that I got his contact info. The conversation we had was so deep. I remember you talking about it. I was like, that is really cool. He was a strong person of faith, a different faith than mine. and But we were able to see eye to eye and have a really honest, good conversation. And I talked about my podcast, and he was like, I'm going to look it up. And he's, he could be listening now. Well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. I always find that it would be awkward. Like, if you talked about the podcast, then it would be fine to give him a card. Yes. But in the, if you didn't, it'd be kind of weird because, like, ride show driving is supposed to be, like, this anonymous thing. Like, yeah. once you drop them off, you're not supposed to con- – well, you can't contact them. But I thought, how how would you how would you approach that? Yeah. Be like, hey, can I have your number? And be right. like, what the hell? <laughs> but if you're already talking about the podcast, you'd be like, whip it out. There's yeah. the card. So that was very much a serendipitous moment. And I do very much wish that I would get their contact info when it happens. It's almost like we need to have serendipity cards. <laughs> I love that. That's I, I'm smiling from ear to ear because I'm like, we need to use that word because I just it sounds like such a fun, pleasant word. Oh, it is serendipity, yeah. and I can say it. <laughs> that's Man, a bonus. That's pretty good. It's a win-win. Next week you'll work on the spelling of it. And we'll oh gosh. Oh no. <laughs> All right, let's jump into this. What was your serendipitous moment? So, um. Back in the day, I used to go to a, an organization called uh, Daddy Daughter, Daddy Daughter Time, something like that. And kind of actually what happened, and he's mad at himself, but basically it's a subscription once a year for $100. And once a month, you get to go do a fun event with your daughter, and it's it's a nonprofit. And what happened was his card processor stopped, didn't auto-renew after a year for everyone. So it stopped paying it, and then I just never really re-upped on it. So... We had Todd in from uh, Daddy Daughter at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't it was remember. Over the summer. Over the summer. And him and I started talking. And uh, one thing that I do, I peer pressure people into therapy. And I also peer pressure people into starting a podcast. So Todd is starting a podcast. And I'm his quote unquote producer. God help us. <laughs> and uh, so him and I together are going to start it. So it's been cool to work with him on that. We're recording a bunch of interviews uh, on Wednesday. But it was just. Uh, it's just a cool connection. Like I knew of him. We brought him in on the podcast, whatever, like, but it's kind of been cool, you know, working with him outside of kind of that. And, yeah. um, saw him today. There was an event, uh, daddy daughter event downtown. Oh, did you go? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It was, um, at Grand Rapids brewing. It was like a brush event where the kids painted oh, uh, on some canvas and stuff like that. So speaking of that, you should join that organization. You have a daughter. I do have a daughter that, is working through some stuff. <laughs> Doesn't matter. She would love it. It's I don't all, know. I feel it's like all... she might have meltdowns there. Well, yeah. that's my fear of doing anything with well, her. Well, then you honest. just deal with it as it comes. Yep. I mean, there's. I mean, you're not going to know if she doesn't have them unless you try. I mean, I understand your hesitation. I'm not trying to like. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, what are you going to do? A lot keep her in. You're going to stay inside for the rest of your life. I mean, I know. You, I mean, you just got to be like, this is this going to be is fun. Life. Avery's going to be there. Let's go. Yep. And if she doesn't, okay, that's fine. But if she does, then you just got to deal deal with it when it comes. But um, so, yeah, it's just kind of a not really a new connection, but a different role of a connection. Um, gosh, God. Bless you. you. See me struggling? No, it wasn't even. It was just a cough. <laughs> I like I need some water. Um, so, yeah, nothing really uh, exhilarating about it, but I'm excited to work on another podcast where I am not in charge of the social. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Actually, that's not that hard. It's just the grind of growing a podcast is just, and I, I'm okay with it, but it's so. It's slow. a lot of work. It's so slow. It's very slow. It's slow. And it's it, slow burn. And and I think all of us, you know, we like to have things instant gratification. So, <laughs> anyways, be looking for that. If you have a daughter, um, please, please reach uh, out to them at uh, daddydaughtertime.org. Um, all nonprofit, super cheap to get involved, and um, yeah, check it out, and hmm. I'm sure we'll 
have him on again to kind of promote the podcast. So for sure. Well, my connection, I haven't really had a chance to connect with very many people unless they were at my house because of current circumstances. Um, but one project that we've been saving money for and we decided to go ahead and pull the trigger on during this season where I'm not at work was um, doing some work in our basement to finish a, a bathroom. And Jason, again, had some really good thoughts on that. My initial plan was to either hire it out to one contractor and let them do everything or just do what I can do and then hire up the rest. Well, the initial plan, that was before you hurt your back. Yeah, you were going right? to be like, I can do this. I'm like, no And I can. probably could. You, you know what? I, I, have, I probably could too, but I just gave him my, my anxiety moment about that. I'm kind of perfectionist <laughs> when it comes to that stuff. And if it wasn't right, it would bother me for the rest of my life oh, for sure. until it was corrected. Yep. So <laughs> after taking that into consideration and the fact that I can't really do anything because of my back, it was like, okay, we've got the money. Let's just see what it would be to farm out each individual job. So instead of hiring a general contractor, that would probably end up hiring out subcontractors for yeah, parts of that's it a, anyway. Yeah. I'll do the work of finding, you know, reputable people and hire it out piece by piece. Which turns out is like two thousand dollars less than it would be to hire a general contractor to handle everything. So, which makes sense because they're going to sub it out, but they're going to add a couple hundred dollars on their end just for their time or their relationship. Yeah, the exactly. Places. So, cut out the middleman and I'll do the work of finding them. So, I found this company on Home Advisor. They don't really have a really solid web presence, not much on Facebook, but they're rocking Home Advisor and they put up pictures of work that they've done. It, they've done similar jobs to what I'm looking for. So I was like, we'll give them a try. So called them, and um, they actually didn't respond right away. It kind of bothered me that they – it's like, hello, I put in a request. Do you want to make some money or what? Like how long are we talking? About a week. Ooh, that's a long yeah. time. And what happened is Home Advisor actually called me and said, we sent your details to this company as you requested. Have you heard from the – heard from them yet and i was like no i oh, haven't that's cool that they followed up so then home advisor was like okay well we'll touch base with the contractor and i didn't think much of it so then a couple of days later again time like hello is this not important to you but a couple of days later he calls and he's like yeah i think we could probably tackle that let's set up a time to come look at your project so he shows up and um he has a partner with him and tells me a little bit about their company and the fact that they both used to work for bigger construction companies, and now they're doing their own thing. They're very selective on the work they do. They're intentionally not all over the web. He's like, we like to just do the work that you know people are going to trust with us. We're not out to go and grow our business in huge ways. We're just a couple guys looking for projects to bang out, do a good job on, and w work off of referrals, basically. Yeah. So I was like, I can respect that. So... And then he was super transparent with me, which anytime a business, regardless of the profession, when somebody is willing to break down their price structure and explain how they arrive at their prices, that just it means a lot yeah. as a consumer. And it also means a lot as a sales rep. That's what I try to do with my customers. We have a saying in our office that trust begins with transparency. So I felt like I was on the receiving end of that. And these guys are just working the numbers out with me, and it was like, awesome, let's do it. So an incredible savings was provided by working with them. And yes, it was a little difficult. Administration appears to not be their strong suit, but they do good work, and they stand by their work, and they love what they do. So I just thought it was cool to run across two guys in a completely different profession that value transparency. And that was the serendipitous moment of my week being stuck at home. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not uncommon for contractors to not call you back. And it's not just contractors. I mean, I had an issue with our dryer and I reached out to a company that had been here before hmm. 
and they set an appointment and they didn't even show up. What? So I'd be so mad. I mean, yeah, I was mad. Huh. So I'm never going to call them again. And um, but you find that uh, you know when I worked in the office at Weed and Feed, the small company, it's amazing when we would return phone calls or emails within 24 hours. Except if you left it at Friday at five o'clock, right. it's going to get hit Monday morning. And they were like, thank you so much for, for getting back to us. Like, I've reached out to three other companies like a week ago, and no one's responded back. Right. I'm like, what are you all doing? Seriously. Like, what are you all doing? Like, just send an email and say, got your estimate, swamped right now, I'll get to you in two days. Yeah. And just set an, I mean, I don't know. I just look at business a different way. I mean, oh, for sure. So, but that's cool. That's kind of how Weed and Feed runs it. We don't advertise. We work on referrals. We just do good work. And I hope well, it works website, out. website, though. Who? You have a website. Yeah, we do. We do. Yes, we do have a website. Because, well, just the business we're in, that's how people search for things is the web. So You would think that would be the same with carpentry, but I guess But again, if they're not, I guess if they're not looking to grow, I mean, you don't need a web presence. It's true. So, But I am so annoyed when I Google somebody and trying to get contact info. Yeah. Like I Googled triumphant carpentry, the name of the business. I couldn't find anything. Wow. I was like, what is That's this strange. place? So, But just meeting the guys, I was like, okay, I get it now. Well, and again. And some... our plumber is very similar. But he's actually come a long way since last time we used him. So he was the first person I asked back in the day, is this even possible in our basement? And he was like, yeah, we can do that. So he gave me a handwritten quote. Didn't save it for himself anywhere. So a couple of years later, when I call him to ask him about it, he's like, I'm going to have to come out and look at that again. It's just such so, a different world. Yeah, so back in the day, he was like, yeah, there it is. But now he's like, a little bit more paper friendly. Yeah. So now he actually has everything online. Mm. He booked an appointment with me online, and then he sent the estimate online. And- Chances are somebody in his life got involved with the company and said, you need to be a little bit more tech savvy. Pretty sure it was his wife. Okay. So- <laughs> I think she's done all of that, and it's great. So nice. Maybe the same thing will happen for the carpentry guys. We'll see. Yeah, I hope it works out for you. I hope in two months we don't have to be like these people, and this is our platform. So we're going to talk shit about that. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. I don't think it will. No. So well, guys, thanks so much. I thank you for sticking through this. If everyone listens to the whole thing, I'm so happy because this right? was a long one. Um, what did we hit? Um, I think we are at. Over two Ooh, hours. Well, without the intro, or just under two hours. Under two hours. But um, yeah, we got kind of some fun stuff uh, coming up for nothing really major, but just kind of wrapping out the year, mm-hmm. um, doing a Christmas episode. That should be fun. And then we're going to change things up for 2020. We yeah. got a different plan, and we hope you like it. Um, yes, we're still going to record the podcast, but I mean, <laughs> there'd be different, uh, maybe some topics or more interviews or yeah i i really think we need to put out a uh, anonymous poll like what do you like the best yes topical our normal format interviews our wives like yeah. just kind of just to get a, a just a little bit of feedback absolutely so, it'll be good yep share the podcast and uh we'll talk to you soon and go to therapy you need it <laughs> Go to therapy. Go to therapy and start a podcast. (laughs) That's our two peer pressure moments. So, uh, all right. Have a good whatever. Bye.